Oh, jam! Hello again, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, because this is another new thing. Due to popular demand, I'm going to try something different today. Now, a lot of you guys watching this are Magic players, and just because I enjoy this so much, and I talk about it so much, and I make so many videos, a bunch of you have decided to try it. And part of trying it is trying out all the different things there are to do, one of which is the arena. The arena is the Hearthstone equivalent of drafting, essentially. And it is a completely different skill set than playing Constructed. After I had some good runs, I've gotten better recently, uh, people have said, hey, you should do an arena walkthrough. And I'm going to preface this with a warning. I am not an expert at arena, not even close. My last run was 3-3 three and three with a deck that I thought was going to get at least 5. So, but I have learned the basics, and that is what some of you guys are struggling with, uh, apparently. And also, like Mike, recently, Mike and I had a pick. Uh, while he was here, we did an, uh, an arena run real quick, or at least built the deck, and we had a disagreement over a pick, and I will get to that uh, later, but... Yeah, so this is Chewie's Beginner's Guide to Arena. If you want to know more about Arena, uh, like some of the, the more advanced things and more high-level techniques, go watch some of the other guys out there. Uh, examples that come to mind are Amaz, Kriparian, and Trump. They are all Arena Masters. I am just a dirtle, but you guys know me, so it's good to start with me. So, Arena is very simple. You start with Arena. Alright, you can either pay $2 or 150 gold. Let's just do that, because real money is, uh, <clears throat> I'm broke. Purchase complete, all right. So what happens is you'll get three, there we go, uh, choices. Three random classes, and they all have a different thing now. Like, Storm, earth, and fire, heed my call. I won't let you down. I will serve. Hmm. <laughs> That's the only place they say that. I was added on a patch not too terribly long ago. But anyway, anyway. You'll get three random classes. Another thing you can do, and Mike does this, is use your arena to help finish your daily quests. So my quest today is five wins with paladin or warrior. And look, one of my choices is paladin. So maybe I can knock a couple wins off with it, maybe not. Hmm. So each class plays drastically differently in arena because of their class cards and their hero power. So Thrall has the totems, and it has Overload, and it has Fire Elemental and Fire Guard, uh, uh, the 3-6 the, the, the for 4, dude, with Overload. Fire Guard Destroyer, is that his name? Why did my brain just fart? But he's got lots of removal and Bloodlust and the big scary dudes that I just mentioned and things like that. Anduin's hero power of healing people means you can establish board control easier. They also have things like Holy Nova and Holy Fire. And the Shadow Word Pain and Death. Stuff like that. And then Uther is... Well, he can make the 1-1 one -one weenies. And he has things like Consecration and Weapons. And the Eldor Peacekeeper and Humility, things like that. So just because, solely because my quest is Paladin, I'm gonna pick Uther. I will serve. Yeah, you will. So the way it works... Huh. So the way it works is, you are given three random cards of a given rarity. There's Legendary, Epic, Rare, and then Commons and Basics are sort of mixed together. This is, this is the first step, is knowing what to draft and why. Okay? Uh, in Arena, Arena is all about board control. Alright, you have to have control of the board. Stats in most cases, are more important than abilities. And it's stats per cost, because you want to be the biggest dog every turn. You want to play the biggest, most effective, most efficient thing every turn, if possible. So, while Recombobulator is awesome, and his ability is a trip, uh, he's a 3-2 for 2, and there's lots of those. Clockwork Giant, I would not recommend ever drafting in Arena. And Quartermaster, he's just a 2-5 five for 5. Now, another thing that's important is uh, health is way more important than you'd think in Arena. Because 
a big butt means that that creature is harder to clear, which means it's on the board to do more damage. Given his ability is ridiculous because Silver, excuse me, Silver Hen recruits, I'm bound to have at least one at any given time, and if not, I can wait a turn uh, to cast him. So he's a two five for five, but you're actually getting four six for five, which or four seven rather for five, which pretty good. So I'm gonna take the quartermaster. Yeah. Another thing you have to be careful of uh, is your mana curve. The first, I'm gonna say, three turns are ridiculously important in arena. So you want to be sure that you have plenty of two and three drops, uh, so you can establish and maintain board control because you can lose a game because you missed a two and three drop and then now you just can't come back as much as i want a silence the hammer of wrath is not great this guy gives you two bodies for five mana and that's actually really good so i'll take the silver hand knight ah now here we go we have removal wolf rider is essentially just a removal spell that might stick around a turn and the draconid crusher um because of the possibility for him to be stupid big, he's a little bit better. I told you, I'm not an expert, okay? This is just basic advice. I'm gonna take the crusher. Ah, now here we go. Repentance is not great when your opponent plays a minion and reduces its health to one. Eh. Unless you know they're gonna play a big dude this turn, and in an arena that's impossible to know. Well, not impossible, but it's highly improbable. Noble Sacrifice is fun, but I'm going to go for the power of the Micro Machine, because a, an unanswered Micro Machine can and will win you the game. So, he's good to have. Alright, we've got the Priestess, who's not great, especially not this early, I don't really need her. Uh, Solemn Vigil is great, but I'm going to go for Mech Warper, because he's a 2-3 two, for 2, and the mech's costing one less, unless you get really lucky grab him early and get a lot of mechs. That doesn't really matter, but he is a 2-3 two, for 2, and that's extremely solid. So I'm going to take that. Uh, okay. Micro Machine is good. Dragon and Sorcerer is actually good. But Shielded Minibot is one of the most ridiculous 2-drops ever. And that's the reason I'm going to take him. It's just on power level. He is ridiculous. I missed. Okay, now we get to some nonsense. So, this guy, unless you're in desperate need of a 3-drop and a taunt, he's not good. Because the one power just... It just doesn't do hardly anything. Uh, the Raging Organ is cool if you can trigger him. And usually... So, in some decks, the Raging Organ is a combo piece, like the old Warrior decks before Grim Patron came along. He was a combo piece where you would play him, give him charge, and rage him, throw some stuff on him, boom, boom, win. Uh, in Arena, he's more of a removal spell. You play him, and then next turn you kill something small, and then you use his uh, plus one attack and win fury to kill something else, and you just two for one them. That's very important. But, and then there's Avenge. When one of your minions dies, give another friendly minion plus three plus two. I'm actually going to take the Avenge because I... I very rarely play Avenge, and I've gotten wrecked by Avenged, or by Avenged so many times that it sucks, and I'm going to try it out. As much as I like the Raging Organ, in a warrior, uh, in a non-warrior, non-mage, he's not that easy to trigger, or to proc, as they say in WoW terms. I never played WoW. Alright, Flying Machine, the Wind Fury is nice, the Mech is nice, that one power is still a pain. Spell damage will really not matter to us, I don't think, unless we luck into a couple of Consecration, but eh. And Sinister Shieldmaster is one of the the best 4-drops. He's just good. He's just solid. 3-5 taunt. He's hard to remove. He does hit pretty hard for 4 mana. Yeah. Totally. Okay, another removal spell, a Blessing of Wisdom, which can be good, and Frost Elemental is just too good. In the late game, he can buy you a turn, and sometimes that's all you need. And he's a solid body. Yeah, we'll take him. Hmm. So we're only nine cards in. The curve doesn't look like anything yet. I need some more two and three drops. But I also need some more back end. 
Demolisher, the randomness sometimes sucks. There's nothing worse than, okay, I need you to hit one of his three guys. I need you to hit one of his three guys. If you hit one of his three guys, I'm in good shape. And he throws the two damage at the face. And for me, that's always the case. Like, the RNG on Demolisher hates me. That's random number generator. Uh, hates me. I know it doesn't, but it feels that way. And again, 1-4. Eh. Uh, equality is great for uh, clearing your opponent's board. The Ravenhold Assassin, however, is 7-5 with stealth. He's got that that hard hit at the end of the game to clear your opponent. I don't know. I think I'll take the equality as much as I like him. There's better big guys you can get. I'll take the equality. And with the hero power, you know, make a 1-1, the equality becomes really good. Okay. Blessing of Might. Give a minion plus 3 attack. That's amazing. Antique Healbot. Restore 8 health to your hero for with a 3-3. That's really good. Blessing of Kings is stupid. 4 mana, plus 4, plus 4, turns your stupid little 1-1 one -one into a sudden, amazing, terrifying threat. This is another one that has wrecked me more times than I care to admit. Just destroyed my whole entire face. Well, you see, I don't have any left. So I'm going to take the Blessing of Kings. Because Paladin is great because you never run out of dudes because you can always make a 1-1. One -one. Uh, Hungry Dragon... Oh, this is obvious. It's Consecration. But uh, Hungry Dragon... I was wrong about him. Summoning the one-cost minion for your opponent... It's not good. Like... The body is fine, and sometimes the one cause minion doesn't really do anything. I personally only take him if I'm in desperate need. Um, Storm and Champion is great. Giving all your dudes plus one, plus one, especially in Paladin, where your stupid one ones become stupid two twos. A stupid two two is way better than a stupid one one. But Consecration, uh, AoE effect is worth its weight in gold in uh, Arena. So, so this guy's fine. 4-5 for five, 5 restores 2 health to you and all your dudes. Okay. Dragon King Sorcerer is fine. Ooh, I do have a Blessing of Kings that I could target him with, but eh, that's kind of lame. Uh, I'm actually going to go for the Argent Squire just because I want some more early game because my early game kind of sucks. And the Divine Shield, especially if you can get an Avenge on it. Ah, uh -huh. Or a Blessing of Kings or just anything, really. It becomes ridiculous. So, yeah. yeah I'm going to go for that. Alright, Stone, Stone Skin Gargoyle is cute. Uh, especially if you're playing Priest and have stuff like Shadow Boxer or uh, the Light Wielder, I think it's called. The thing you get from the Light of the Naru or Shadow Boxer, Northwind Cleric, those things. Because it heals itself every turn. Micro Machine, as I said, is amazing, but the Mechanical Yeti at 4 is just the 4 5. It's just super solid. It's one of the best 4 drops. I'm going to take it. I don't like this. So I talked about Repentance already, and it's not that great. Raid Leader seems good, and he's great if you can flood the board and then play a Raid Leader and attack. But Raid Leader being a 2-2 is so easy to kill, like everything kills it. My own personal experience is that in Arena, yeah, they just kill him. He just dies, and then you don't get to have the fun. So I'm actually going to go with the Guardian of Kings. Because again, he's got that solid body and the 6 health. Sometimes all you need is a turn. This is just not pretty. Life's Justice, no. Okay, no. A 1-4. It's great when it comes with Muster for Battle by itself. No. Uh, Solemn Vigil. I really love drawing cards, but my early game still needs help and I'm halfway through the deck. Um, I think I'm going to take the Unstable Ghoul. Yeah. Oh man, come on. So Venge is good. The Frost Wolf, fro, fro, a little, Frost Wolf Grunt is fine. A two two with Taunt for two. That's 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 fine. You know, it's not great. It's not bad. It's it's good. You know, whatever. The Venture Coat Mercenary is. He's tempting because he's so huge for his cost. Seven six for five is insane, but. His ability here is the worst. Your minions cost three more now. The best thing you can do is suck up. Like, you play him, your opponent goes, ah, and throws a fireball at him. Oh, yes, thank you. Because that's a fireball you don't have to deal with. And 
it only costs you five mana, which isn't great, but you know. Uh, the, or they can drop a big game hunter and pick him off. Okay, cool. The worst thing they can do is freeze. No, the worst thing they can do is actually hit him with the paladin cards like Eldor Peacekeeper or uh, Humility to give him one attack. So now he's a 1 6. You're saddled with this cost three more thing. And with six ass, he's incredibly hard to get rid of. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to run this into something and kill it. Yay. And you'll find yourself making bad trades, you know. Instead of picking off, like, his 3-1 that needs to die, you'll find yourself running it into his uh, Boulder Fist Ogre just to kill it. So you can cast other things, and that's not good. But, again, his power level, he's really well balanced, because his power level as a 7-6 for 5 is just stupid. Uh, and you know what? I've talked myself into it. I'm going to take... Yeah. Oh, now here we go. This is, this is good. So your 4-2 with stealth is good. Your 3-3 three, three with Divine Shield is good. Your 2-3 two, for 2 is good. These are all basically good cards. Uh, my 3-drop slot is completely lacking. That's weird. But I don't really care so much. The 4-2... Like, in the early game, he's not great. Because he just trades with everything. In the late game, however, he becomes much better. Because you can drop him, he's stealthed, he'll survive, and then you can trade him up. So run him into something that costs more than three, which is very important. You want to trade up as much as possible or trade efficiently, two for one, that sort of thing. One, two, three, four. I've only got four two drops. I'm going to take the Crocodilus. For the sole purpose that he is... Hello! That he is just solid... And like I said, the first three turns are desperately important. Um, okay, so Mini Mage, no. Spell damage doesn't matter to us. He dies to everything. You know, if you're playing a Druid and they have Swipe, well, good job. You just played your Mini Mage for no reason. And he's, he's just not good enough to play. Coghammer is a weapon. Weapons are good because it's renewable sources of... Hey, Chewy. Renewable sources of damage. And he gives one of your guys Divine Shield and Taunt. It says random. If you've only got one guy on the board, it's not random. So that's good. But Paladin Sky Golem, a 6-4 that gives you a 4-drop. Oh. Oh, beautiful. 4-drops are so good. Hello. Okay, Angry Chicken. No. Unless you have some bizarre... Like deck that's got three hound masters or that can pump just no don't do it it's not worth it it's funny when it works do that in constructed another equality could be good but actually i think i'm going to take the questing adventurer one because my three drop slot is sort of missing and two because if left unchecked he just gets out of hand quickly so i'm going to take him how's my curve look curve is okay i could use a few more two and three what is this? Okay, Repentance again, no. I really love Solemn Vigil. But since I'm hurting in the early game, I think I might want a Noble Sacrifice. Noble Sacrifice essentially says... To put it in magic terms, you're, you're fogging the first thing your opponent does. Or the first attack your opponent makes. So whenever something attacks... It hits the, get down, dude, instead. Now, sometimes that's amazing. Like, they don't think it's a noble sacrifice, and they attack with their, let's say, their uh, micro machine. And you go, yes, because you just took out their, like, 5-2 micro machine for free, or for one. But normally, opponents will, like, I automatically assume it's a noble, sac uh, a noble sacrifice when in a paladin plays a secret in arena. I just assume it's a noble sacrifice. And then if it's not, I work around it. So, I'm actually going to take the Solemn Vigil just because with all these drops, I want to draw some cards. Ooh, Haunted Creeper. Haunted Creeper is amazing in arena because he's he's just a 1-2, but he's so hard to get rid of because you drop him on turn 2 or turn 1 with a coin, and now he's got essentially 4 health. 
that they have to get rid of, and they can't do it all at once. Uh, Argent Protector is cool, but I find too many times I want to play him on turn two with nothing else on the board, and that sucks. So I'm going to go with the Honor Creep. Okay. So we already talked about the Guardian of Kings and the Flying Machine. Reckless Rocketeer, he's, it's a finisher, or it's a removal spell, essentially. You play it when you can kill your opponent with it, or when you can kill something terrifying that your opponent has. Uh, I'm actually going to take it for that reason. What? Can I just throw all these back? Oh, oh. Okay, the 5-4 four for 4 is fine. It's not as good as the 4-5 four for 4, because that 4 health dies to lots of things, like the uh, Jungle Panther we talked about earlier, the 4-2. Um... That said, the Gulcher Footman can stand in the way for a minute. If you drop him on turn one, your opponent's going to go, huh? Or they might just kill him with their two drop that they coined out. Well, I'm actually going to go for the Voodoo Doctor because that restore two health. Sure, it's only got the one toughness, and the one uh, health really hurts against <sighs> Rogue, Paladin, a little bit, Mage. What's the other one? Druid. But the restore two health, you can remove something with another, like I can run into something with my River Crocolisk. You know, let's say run into a 2-2 a, a two -two or something, something that won't kill it, and then restore it back up to full. And yeah, I'll just, I'll just take him. Whatever. Do I have any silence? I don't have any silence. So, Puddle Stomper, again, the 3-2 for 2 is fine. I don't have any Murloc things going on and in arena you rarely will he's he's perfectly fine but i don't have any silence and i really want one silence because you always just want one silence just in case oh god what is that please don't kill me spell damage doesn't matter again one four eh. repentance isn't great i guess i'll take the lepernome whatever he can trade up oh my god okay injured blade master is amazing if you're playing priest or you have lots of heals I do not. So, he's essentially just a 4-3, which is fine, but not great. Uh, Sludge Belcher. Everyone that plays Constructed knows Sludge Belcher. You've either played Sludge Belcher or you've run into Sludge Belcher and uh, you've said bad words. This is why, things like this are why I want to silence. He's ridiculous. Uh, Argent Commander is ridiculous in a wholly different way. Because he's essentially a 4 mana, a 4 damage removal spell that they have to work extra hard to kill, or that hits for more damage, or whatever. But Sledge Belcher... What is this deck trying to do? Looks like I'm trying to just survive to the... well, essentially every arena deck's trying to survive to the uh, the mid game. I will take the Sledge Belcher just because he represents. He either sucks up a piece of hard removal or they have to run lots of dudes into him. And that's great. Uh, I love Argent Commander, but against the Sledge Belcher, I think I'd rather have the Sledge Belcher. That might be a mistake. It might not. Um, Anger Chicken, no. Sun for your Protector is fine. Taunt. Okay. Taunt in Arena is not necessarily used to protect you, necessarily. It is used to protect your other dudes. So let's say I have a piloted Sky Golem, or I played my Reckless Rocketeer and hit him in the face. Yes, and they've got a two power dude on the board, and I'm like, oh, this is just gonna kill it. I, if, if it survives one more turn, I'll win, what do I do? You can drop Sunfear Protector to taunt other things, so they can't just up and kill your Reckless Rocketeer with what they have on the board. Like, there's always tricks. Everyone has a trick. There's always a trick. But, that might buy you the turn you need to win. Uh, that said, I don't think I need a Sun Fear Protector. I'm going to take the Emperor Cobra because the Emperor Cobra has essentially Death Touch. And in the late game, when they drop something terrifying, like, let's say your opponent uh, plays Deathwing. And you go, because Deathwing, you know, sometimes you get legendaries. And Deathwing, if you can 
you know, play properly, Deathwing is amazing. But let's say they drop a Deathwing. You're at like 24. You've, you've been really good the whole game. This is not Magical Christmas Land. You're at like 24. And you're ahead on board. And you go, yeah, I got this. And they go, Deathwing. They wipe your board. They discard whatever's left in their hand. And they go, ha! And you go, oh, God. What do I do? This thing kills me in two hits. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. He's drawing for a Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny of course then your opponent could drop up something and Sunfear protector it in which case you lose because that's the glory of the taunts but I'm going to take the Cobra just because aha Archer Protector is again really good Acolyte of Pain is card draw and this deck doesn't I got what one did I take the Solomon yeah I took the Solomon I've got one piece of card draw and the Worgen Infiltrator is fine, but again, the one health. Eh. Arja Protector is fine, but if you play into an empty board, you're losing value. and uh, I hate that. So I'm going to take the Acolyte of Pain for the card draw. Even if you just get one card off of it, that's cool. You drew a card, you dealt a damage, whatever. Hey, last pick! What do I have with Death Rattle? I've got Leper Gnome, Haunted Creeper. Unstable Ghoul, Mechanical Yeti. Oh, that's gonna go. Okay, Scarlet Purifier. Really, I just look at it as a four-three because most of the time the battle cry doesn't matter, and when it does, it hurts. Like you can take out opposing creatures, but you trigger their death rattle essentially, and you could accidentally take out your own dudes, and that sucks. Because I have an equality, I'm gonna take the Wild Pyromancer. Because the quality wild pyromancer is a board clear, straight up. You, you cast the quality, everything's health becomes one. Wild py pyromancer deals one damage to everything. Boom. Board is suddenly empty. <clears throat> Excuse me. And angry chicken, no. All right, so it's not the best deck I've ever drafted, but you know what? Not bad either. All right, so let's play a game. See how we do. The entire arena run will not be on this video. Um, I'll probably just play one game, maybe two, depending on how it goes, and then cut it there. I won't play the arena, though. I will wait for comments and whatnot for you guys to decide if uh, you want me to keep playing it on video or if it's not worth it, whatever. Uther versus Gul'dan. All right, Warlocks don't run out of cards. <laughs> That's their deal. Because of their hero power, they just always have cards. And look at this. Unstable Ghoul, Divine Shield, River Crocolis. This is uh, just Divine Shield, Urgent Squire. This is actually really good. Uh, I'll throw back the Silver Hand Knight and hope to get... I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Hey, a one drop. Awesome. And we have the coin. He's got a one drop. All right, so I was going to play the Argent Squire straight up. Now he's got a 3-2 on the board. We need to clear that, or we need to threaten it. So instead of just dropping the Argent Squire, which does nothing, hmm, hmm uh, I could play the 2-3, but that's giving him a 2-drop for his 1-drop kind of sucks. So I'm going to play the Voodoo Doctor, ignore his battle cry, whatever. So now we're not trading up, but we're trading evenly. Yeah. And he'll probably hit me in the face and then I can trade into it or something. But, there we go. Why ah! Void Walker! Well, that's a problem. I was afraid of that. Turn off that light. Well, now we can't kill this, and we can't kill this, so this sucks. Hmm, indeed. Okay, one thing I could do is attack Pyromancer, coin, that will kill this, that will hurt this, and play the Argent Squire. Let me think. I don't know if that's worth it, though. I could also just swing here and play the Unstable Ghoul. Then if he Dark Bombs... 
and we just take three again. Ah! Okay, let's 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 go with the trick because it's fun. Boom! So that kills that, hurts that, and we have two one drops on the board or one toughness dudes on the board to threaten his stupid imp. So we're left with only three cards in hand, one of which is a seven drop, but that's fine. If he plays another taunt, hopefully we can kill it and still take this out. It's not the best idea, but we did it. Oh, he does not have anything good. Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm gonna play in my garden while you think. Is that alright? I found a golden radish a few days ago. What the hell is this, golden radish? Hey, alright! So now we go punch, clear that off the board, we hit him for three, and we could drop the Emperor Cobra, but I want to save him for when we need him, so I'll drop a Crocolis. Job's done. We now have board control, and we have initiative, so now that means that he'll be the one that's reacting. So he'll play something and we'll go bah, and we'll play something and he has to panic, see there's the Dark Bomb. Nice. I, feel icky. I also feel icky. Oh man, if we played the unstable ghoul, that'd be silly. Okay. I fight. Let's go ahead and take this out because I'd rather take two now than take two many times later. Ow. Play out the Acolyte to draw cards. Hit him for three. Nice. Can I find a boot? Can a brother get a boot? All I want is a boot. Implosion? Ooh. That hurts. Hey, we can draw a card. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna kill this and draw a card, because that's awesome. <clears throat> Hello, Venture. So we could play an Unstable Ghoul with a Micro Machine behind it, which is actually pretty good. Or we could go ahead and drop the Venture Co Mercenary and make him crap his pants. Hmm, <sighs> mm, indeed. I think I'm gonna go play it safe though. I'm gonna go Unstable Ghoul and Micro Machine. So, this is what I was talking about. Now, the Micro Machine that can grow is safely sitting behind this. If it manages to remove this, we'll draw a card. It'll cost him hopefully all of his dudes. And even if he just has like a Dark Bomb, it'll still wipe these two out. So, we're in really good shape right now. I'm gonna stretch. I also wonder. I wonder what you're doing. I wonder what's for lunch. I wonder why I can't find a boot or a golden wrench. Ooh, okay, there's the dark bomb. Excellent. Uh-oh. Oh, that sucks. No, actually, that doesn't suck at all. Kills his dude, we draw a card. Questing adventurer, I'm okay with that. Harvest Golem, that kind of sucks. But he'll die. So, yay. I was gonna say, you know, if you're really funny right now, Blessing of Kings. No such luck. Alright, here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna Questing Adventurer. Give me a quest. I'm gonna Leper Gnome. I feel icky. He's a 3-3 now. I'm gonna punch this to draw a card and hope... Okay, so now I'm gonna silence. Now, this is possibly a waste of a silence, but I wanna do it just to show you some of the downfalls. So, I'm gonna silence this to where now it's not 
as much of a problem because the 2 3 that spits out a 2 1 is a large pain. Because it's what's called a sticky minion. It's hard to get rid of. You want to clear the board as much as possible. So now this is a 4 4. That does not spit out a little buddy damage going. And we don't have initiative anymore, but I'm pretty sure we have board control. And next turn, I can drop one of my 7 drops here. That was nice! That was real nice! Whoa! Okay, so I think I'll drop this and see what he's got. I want to save this until I don't want to cast that many more minions, and until he's exhausted the rest of his removal. So, we'll regain 6 health, drop a 5-6. That is terrifying when you're, uh ill-prepared to handle it. Trust me, I know. Oh, my okay. No, you attend me! Ready, sir. Shields up. Ah! See, his life is low, so he knew I might start going face. I was gonna go face. So that's good for him. So, let's... Let's be dirty. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this. Then I'm going to play the Yeti, and I'm going to drop a Venge. Yeah, so we're going to take this out, play the Yeti, and drop a Venge. Now you might think, hey, make a dude. No. Wait, do I, yeah, I'll make a dude. Because, so, the plan here, he's clearly going to run one of these into the Guardian and kill it. I want the Avenge to trigger. This will turn into a... What is it, plus 3, plus 2? This will turn into a 7-7. Seven, seven. And this will turn into a 4-3. I would rather have it hit the little dude, actually, to have my damage spread out. Because one big dude, one removal spell is all you need. Two medium-sized dudes are harder to deal with. And even if he kills the 1-1 one, one first, we'll get... Oh, and he knows my trick. All right. So which one are you gonna give it? Give it to the big guy now, it'll be funnier. See, told you that was funnier. Oh no, 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 don't have this whole fire. Balls. That's okay though. Okay, he's used the soul fire. Wolf Rider, huh. We're still in pretty good shape. We've got more cards than he does. One of those is a... Oh, wait. What did he discard? Oh, he discarded. Okay, so he's got two cards. We've got three cards and a spare part. I'm going to go ahead and drop the giant mercenary. And make a dude. Do you want to armor plate him? I don't see any reason to armor plate him. So we'll say go. Do you now? Void color is terrifying in Arena because you never know what other demon, if any, they're holding. Okay, he's hoping to shoot this guy. Come on, shoot the void color. Shoot the void color. Shoot the balls. Oh well. Okay, with his life so low, and our life so high, he's got six damage on the board. Screw it, I'm just gonna go for face. So he's now at three. I play this. This can't shoot it because this is a mech. We have it plus one health just in case. We will not make a dude because mind control tech is a very real thing in Arena. And unless you have lots of options, uh, like lots of things on the board and none of them really matter, you don't want to play mind control. You don't want to just stumble into mind control tech. Oh, okay, he didn't have a demon. 
We got we got another dark bomb. Summoning portal. Dragon egg. All right, and we win. Well played. Ah. <laughs> hey, I got a corruption. Yay! Screw you, Lord, Lord Walker Cho. And then we'll go ahead and poke him. All right, want to know this run? And that's one of our paladin wins. So I'll stop there for this video. Let me know if you guys want to see more. And we'll go from there. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it or if it helped. Leave me a comment if you have any questions at all. Uh, or comments or concerns or... Arena's too random, it's just a bunch of nonsense. That's not true. I've heard that from people. Like, well, Arena's just too random and it, it there's no skill involved. That is not true. Because there are lots of Arena players out there who get 12, 10, 11 wins regularly. And if it was just random, that wouldn't happen. So there's there's some skill involved. It just is how you pick and how you play. And you have to play differently based on your deck. Blah, 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 blah. Sort of like drafting in Magic. You're making the best out of what you got. Except what you got here is a little more random. Leave me a comment. Like I said, any questions or anything, let me know. Oh yeah, that pick that Mike and I were talking about. Uh, the choices were something stupid. Uh, Lightwell, it was Priest. Lightwell, which is a 0-5 that heals a random friendly minion for 3 at the beginning of each turn. And Illuminator, which is a 2-4. And at the end of your turn, if you control a secret, you gain 4 life. Mike was like, take the Lightwell. I'm like, well, no, you don't take the Lightwell. He goes, take the Lightwell. Not taking the light will because light will is a zero five. It does literally nothing. He goes a two four would be a waste of a pick because there aren't any secrets. Like the two four is a two four for three, which means it can hit things. It has a big butt. It is perfectly fine. And yeah, but Mike was hung up on doing something. Doing something is less important in some cases than the stats. He said a zero five that does something minor and a two four that does nothing. That's that's fairly important. You know, you want to be able to a zero five. Your opponent can uh, essentially ignore forever, and it's just taking up a spot on your board and doing nothing. And you can say, well, it, you know, it's a target for random. Shut up. That's dumb. <laughs> that's not a reason to have it in your deck. Just throwing out there. I don't mean to pick on Mike, but Mike doesn't arena terribly often, and he's one of those people who who says, well, I can't do that well. Now I'm putting words in his mouth. Just ignore me. Don't listen to me. But that's that. So you can subscribe. If you want to know when the next one goes up, if you guys want me to do another, that's the comment you can leave. Let me know if you want me to keep playing with this deck in videos, and I will. But I don't have to. It's up to you guys. And, yeah. Subscribe if you want to support what I do here on the Mana Pool, the podcast, the videos, all that. Then you can check out Patreon. You can get videos 24 hours early if you're so inclined. And with that, I'll be done. So this has been the first of Chewie's Beginner's Guide to the Arena. Thank you all very much for watching, and uh, go play some arena. We're not dead! Oh, we're dead. No, we're not dead! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is why I love this game. And as he was picking it up, a seagull like flew in and grabbed it like from between his hand and his face and flew off.